Hello, uh, today I have a, another sort of semi-production job I have to do in my shop. It's this part here. It's uh, sort of a clevis that's welded into an assembly for a hydraulic cylinder to, uh, to attach to. It's made out of one inch thick, just mild steel plate. I think it's been laser cut and there's a hole that's about, it's uh, been cut to 950 thou. And my job is just to open this hole up with a boring bar to uh, 10 thou over an inch. Now, if I was just doing this job, if I had one of these to do, I would set this up on my milling machine table, put it up on blocks, so I'd have some clearance. I would dial the hole in, put the boring head in, and just with two or three passes bore that uh, size. Uh, in this case, though, it's not a one-off. I have 40 of them to do and with the equipment I have I find it much faster to bore holes like this on my lathe than on my milling machine. So the uh, I decided I would do it on the lathe um, but because I have so many to do I need to find a quick way to get them on the lathe and get them in position and then bore them out and get them off and get the next one on. Um, Something like this you could hold in a four jaw chuck. You could grab it here and here and this is a bit of an angle, but I think you could make it work. Um, the problem with that is that it's somewhat slow. You put it on the lathe and you have to put a dial indicator in here and dial this hole in um, every time, which takes time. Um, with work like this, with flat plates, it's nice to just hold something like this on your face plate and then clamp it down. And there's a, a couple benefits to that. Um, one, if you set your clamps up right, it can be just about as quick as opening and closing the jaws on a four jaw chuck. And secondly, because the when you clamp it down, you're not pushing it around like this, like you would with a four jaw, you can actually position the hole using a live center in your tailstock. And that has a couple of advantages. One, it's very quick because um, centers on the hole. Now if the hole isn't made that accurately it's not going to center that accurately but in this case the position of the hole isn't overly critical. It's more critical that it be on size and be square to the plate. Um, anyways if you uh, hold that in place with a tailstock it, it does two things. It centers it virtually instantly and it holds it in position for you while you get your clamp set up and that can make it very quick. Um, the, the, the problem you sometimes run into with that is that when you're um, doing that on a faceplate that's in the lathe, it's, everything is a vertical surface and everything wants to fall off the faceplate. So you can hold this in place with the tailstock, but the clamps themselves will want to slide down the slots they're mounted in. So it's nice to be able to clamp the studs themselves to the face plate so that they stay in position when the clamp pressure is off. Now normally when I've done that in the past I've just used a, you just put a flange nut and clamp it to the face plate. Um, in this plate, uh, in this job however, I'm using these gooseneck clamps and when I put them on um, I don't have a lot of clearance under the clamp. I'm trying to keep everything low to the faceplate because the lower I can keep the faceplate, the less boring bar I need to hang out to reach the back of the hole. So I'm using these gooseneck clamps and using one of these as a jam nut would be too thick. So what I did was I just took some quarter inch thick cold rolled steel I drilled and tapped a hole that fits the stud and then this works as my jam nut. Um, it has one other advantage of doing this and if you ever clamp stuff down to a milling machine table or a face plate you know that you oftentimes need to have the clamp parallel to the slot like in this situation and uh, what can happen is the clamps can be narrow and they'll barely span the slot. This clamp has a, a ra good radius on it. Um, this has a chamfer. And when you put it on, it, it will sit there, but it just sits. And it's very easy for this thing to slip down this way or this way. 
and even if you do get it set up when you clamp it down there's so little surface area touching this face plate that the clamping pressure can dent the face plate because the face plate's just cast iron and it's relatively soft so having this um, jam nut made like this allows the clamp the heel of the clamp to rest on this and it's a bigger surface so you don't have to position it so accurately and it'll protect the face plate from uh, getting dents in it the one issue I ran into with this is um, the jam nut is still a bit too thick when you clamp this down it bottoms out on the jam nut and doesn't actually clamp the work so what I'm going to do is put set screws here in the back of the clamp and then I can raise the heel of the clamp up a bit and it'll clamp the work down. I tested it out by just putting a temporary spacer in, clamped it down and it's holding the work very solidly. It's not going to move for the amount of machining I have to do so that should work. And I've just set two of my clamps up on the mill and I'm about to drill and tap those out and then I'll be able to install them on the faceplate. Uh, so here's the gooseneck clamp. Uh, after the set screw's been put in, I made a bit of a rookie move there when I was tapping the holes I put the tap in the wrong size tap holder and the tap slipped on me fortunately nothing broke or jammed so I was able to recover but um, what I've done is I've set this set with a set screw so it's the uh, correct height so that the clamp is almost touching the jam nut here which will keep this as low as possible now that I've got this at the right height I'll just back a nut against it And that'll just keep the set screw from moving. I've always maintain the proper position. I just have to do that for the second set uh, clamp. And then I am ready to put this piece, uh, the faceplate on the lathe and try it out. Thank <laughs> you. 